Good evening, everyone. If I could have your attention for a moment. On behalf of the Mount St. Joseph Academy community, we would like to welcome you here this evening to St. Peter's Church for the commencement exercises for the Mount St. Joseph Academy class of 2022. If I could ask you right now to just check to make sure that your cell phones are silenced, um, that would be very helpful. And also as a reminder to you gentlemen that we are in a place of worship, if we could please remove our caps. Thank you, we will begin momentarily. Good evening and welcome. It is my pleasure to introduce Reverend Stephen Marchand, who will pro provide the invocation. Father Stephen. As in all things, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, you are the giver of every good gift. You open your hand and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Look kindly upon us this evening as we gather in celebration and in gratitude, most of all, to your many gifts, to these, your sons and daughters, the graduates of Mount St. Joseph 2022. We pray in a special way this evening that they be blessed to always know your name, to serve you faithfully. Bless their parents who have brought them to this proud moment. Bless their friends, all those who have traveled near and far to be with us this evening, that this evening may be an evening of service to your name and praise and thanksgiving for every good gift you indeed do give us. And this we ask as always through the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen.
If you would please join us in singing America the Beautiful, which you will find in the music issue number 765. Please be seated. It is my pleasure to introduce the principal of Mount St. Joseph Academy, Mr. Michael Alexander. Mr. Alexander. <clears throat> Bishop Coyne, graduates, parents, family, faculty, staff, and friends of Mount St. Joseph Academy. Good evening and welcome to the commencement ceremony for the graduating class of 2022. It is my distinct honor and privilege to be standing here today 
addressing our Mount St. Joseph family. There are only a handful of seminal moments in an individual's life that define or refine the traveled path. High school graduation is certainly one of those moments. It's a gateway or, or, or a wicket that every successful citizen must pass through in order to continue to blaze the, their path forward. Some people may, talk, may take longer than others. That's okay, as long as you pass through the gate. Eventually, practically every successful person crosses that finish line. Some think that high school graduation is the end of the journey, that it is the, the culmination of a student's work beyond which learning stops. I, however, look at it a different way. This, is, this certainly is the culmination of 13 years of preparation for a lifetime of continued, continuous learning. And each and every graduate before you today is ready for that challenge before you. You've been armed with the skills and attributes necessary to start that journey, to make it in your successful path and choose after walking through this gate, and I look forward to following your successes as that path best suits you. So here's some humble suggestions, advice, advice that you might just want to think about. Wherever you go and whatever you do, continue to ask questions. Take nothing at face value. Always maintain your curiosity. Never stop learning. Never lose your courage or become too proud to say these three simple words. Hey, I don't know. But always follow up with, with this. Could you explain that concept for me? Could you show me how to do that? Life is a series of lessons. It's strung out over time. Some are good, some are bad. And you think of it, there's really only one being that, that has all the answers and you're not him. As Admiral William McRaven said in his commencement speech in 2014 to the University of Texas at Austin, he said, if you're going to change the world, don't forget to make your bed in the morning. If you're going to change the world, don't forget to make your bed in the morning. Admiral McRaven is a retired commander of the United States Special Operations Command. When he was, um, when he was commanding the Special Operations Command, he had about 69,000 surface members dedicated to the counter-terrorist terrorist operations worldwide. His commencement speech is legendary because of a simple message. Dedicating your time and efforts to making a difference in the world is an incredibly difficult and noble task. You currently possess the beginnings of the necessary skills and you'll in, in order and you will need to accomplish the mission and you will acquire many more skills as you progress through your life. But you have to simply do my first suggestion. If you don't know, ask. Accepting the noble task of service to something greater than yourself is definitely hard work. But you have to make, sh make sure you are a complete person to accomplish the assignment, and it isn't easy. But imagine how nice it would be at the end of a very difficult day to be able to sleep in a bed that was clean and comfortable. So if you're going to want, if you want to change the world, don't forget to make your bed. It was a privilege to get to know each and every graduate this year, and I thank each and every one of you for allowing me to learn from you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, this evening we present to you 23 graduates ready to join the ranks of our citizenry. They have proven to their teachers, peers, families, and themselves that they are ready to pass through this gate. And I'm proud to concur with this assessment. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Alexander. Please join me in welcoming Ethan Corsell, who will be delivering this year's Veritas at Puritas Address. Ethan. Your Excellency Bishop Coyne, Reverend Fathers, Principal Alexander, members of the Mount St. Joseph Academy School Board, family, friends, and fellow graduates. These past couple of weeks leading up to graduation, I've been greeted by a number of people who are excited for both me and my accomplishments. When they would discover that I had to write a speech for this event, they would quickly ask me, are you valedictorian? To which I would respond, yeah, just kidding. <laughs> Salutatorian, no. This response would normally be followed by a three second pause of awkward silence. I'm actually the very toss at period toss award winner. Then, when getting stared down by a blank face, I remembered that not everyone knows what this niche MSJ award is, so I would try and quickly give a spark notes definition of the award. When giving this description of what criteria and attributes go into qualifying, the internal thoughts of, I could have worked just that much harder, or studied for that much longer, began to rush through my mind. And yes, I very well could have tried harder to maintain a higher GPA, or have stayed up later that one night studying. But in receiving this award, I've come to the realization I did not lose the gold in any sense. I am so honored to be standing up here today as the Veritas at Puritas Award winner. And I urge you all to remember that your payoff may not always be immediate, and that your reward may come in a way that can seem unexpected. And that goes for whatever it is you hope and plan to accomplish in life. All those late night study sessions, hours upon hours of sports training, endless band or chorus rehearsals, never ending piles of art pieces, your hard work will pay off, so stay persistent and never give up. I am very grateful for how my high school journey aligned itself, and I am very blessed to have had the opportunities to do all the things I have during my time at MSJ. It is because of all the teams, clubs, and classes that I am who I am today, but more importantly, it is because of all the people I have met along the way. All the people who have proved themselves as not only teachers or peers, but as friends and family. It is my honor to be receiving the Veritas at Puritas Award this year. Prior recipients of this award have consisted of spectacular students in both merit and studies, and I am privileged to be joining my fellow recipients and alumni of Mount St. Joseph Academy. I would like to thank everyone who has made tonight possible, to all the faculty and staff for providing us with the lessons necessary to take on the world. Over these past four years, we have looked to you for guidance, and you have never failed to be there. We thank you. To all the donors of Mount St. Joseph Academy who have contributed and continue to contribute to keeping this wonderful school running, we thank you. To the alumni of MSJ who have paved the way and set fundamental steps to follow in, and especially this year's Golden Graduates, we thank you. To my friends over at the Kervik and Loretta homes, when I began working at these facilities, I had no clue the impact it would make on my life. Getting to know each and every resident has been truly life-changing. I thank you. And to the parents and guardians of every student present here today, without you, none of us would be achieving this milestone in our lives. Mom and Dad, I feel so grateful and blessed to have parents like you in my life. In addition, thank you so much for your support, both emotional and financial, over the past 18 years of my life. I cannot sum up into words the amount of gratitude and appreciation I have for you. I love you, Mom and Dad. Again, I would like to thank everyone who has made tonight possible. We appreciate your never-ending guidance and support and cannot thank you all enough. <laughs> Class of 2022, as you all embark on your new journeys, remember to take pride in how far you have come and acknowledge the little victories every day bears. As you go into the world and leave the doors of Mount St. Joseph Academy, remember to bring with you the fruits of your hard work. Bring with you the lessons MSJ has taught you. Remember that you need rest. It can be very easy, especially entering college, to stretch ourselves too thin. Do not take shame in saying no. 
focus the fruits of your labor on pursuits you are passionate about. And with this focused mindset, develop a goal and a vision. And if you don't know what this vision is yet for yourself, that's okay. The years after high school are meant for us to truly find ourselves. None of you are expected to have your lives planned out the minute you leave high school. So take that strange yet intriguing class and do whatever it takes to find who you are. And if you make mistakes along the way, that's okay. Those are what fuel our desires and allow us to grow. I would like to leave you all with a very important piece of advice. Go out and find your people. In a world that is more isolated than ever before, we are often tempted to go through it alone. You were created to engage, adventure, and explore with others. This world is tough. Please do not take it on by yourself. One thing I know for sure is that I will always be a part of a family here at MSJ. It can reach out to so many people willing to listen. The ache of loneliness is real, but it does not have to be a reality. So surround yourself with people who encourage you and take pride in your accomplishments. And once you find them, hold on. Thank you. Thank you, Ethan, and congratulations. Please join me now in welcoming Torrance Minette, who will be delivering this year's salutatory address. Torrance. Your Excellency, Bishop Coyne, Reverend Fathers, Principal Alexander, members of the Mount St. Joseph Academy School Board, family, friends, and fellow graduates. Good evening, and thank you all for coming. Special thanks to our donors, our alumni, and our golden graduates in attendance today. All of you have left a lasting impact on the school and current students. Mount St. Joseph Academy is a community in which everyone has continued to build and shape, both presently and in the past. As I was starting to think about writing this speech, I thought back to freshman year. I was sitting in Mr. Barnstein's English class during free reading, and for once in my life, I did not have a book to read. For those who may know me, you'll know this was a shock. I, of course, asked Mr. Barnstein for a recommendation, and he handed me Mostly Void, Partially Stars by Joseph Fink and Jeffrey Kramer. For those who are unfamiliar with it, it was a book full of transcripts from a podcast called Welcome to Night Vale. It's sci-fi, urban fantasy and horror, paranormal experiences, and comedy all wrapped into one amazing creation. I was, of course, hooked immediately and still enjoy listening to the show till this day. One quote from the show especially stands out to me when thinking all this graduating class has accomplished and withstood these past few years. Be proud of your place in the cosmos. It is small, and yet it is. How unlikely, how fantastic, and stupid, and excellent. For all of us in this room, we are unlikely statistics. How exciting and yet largely terrifying to exist in a time where we are not only living in technology and innovation, but also in the time of a deadly pandemic. And yet, we are still here. We made it through online school, wearing masks in school, not wearing masks in school, and having to eat lunch in our classrooms instead of the cafeteria. Even though we might have been physically separated at times, we still stood together as a group when the times came. And while some of our usual activities were reduced or had to be skipped entirely, we still found ways to build friendships and create some amazing memories. I feel a great sense of pride in my fellow peers and I for the resilience we have shown in such a difficult time. Of course, not without some procrastination and good times. I would like to call upon one of my favorite memories that has to do with how I got an unlikely nickname. As I was sitting in AP Chem with Mr. Smith my junior year, another student walked in, proceeded to name off Sophia, Ethan, and Sam, then looked at me and told me he couldn't remember my name. I then told him who I was, but he was like, nah, you look like a Kaylee. I'm going to call you Kaylee. Mr. Smith, being Mr. Smith, decided to run with this nickname, and that's why I ended up being called an AP Chem. Soon after the name spread throughout to my other classes, and everyone agreeing that Kaylee was too long to say, shortened it to K-Dog. And that's how I ended up being called K-Dog my whole senior year. Because of this strong community throughout the school, an inside joke became an outside joke. I decided to tell the story, not only to show the fun my peers and I had throughout the years, but also to highlight what a blessing it is to 
have such a tight-knit school. I would like to specifically thank Mr. Smith for his great sense of humor. More broadly, I want to thank our teachers, mentors, coaches, staff, and everyone else I may be forgetting to include in this list for sticking through with us and pushing us to do our best, for answering those late-night emails, giving advice, being a shoulder to lean on, granting those last-minute extensions when we put something off just a little too long. There was support every step of the way and everywhere we looked. Everyone knew they were never alone in their struggles. A true sense of community that exemplifies everything Mount St. Joseph Academy stands for. And thank you to the parents. We could not have gotten here without you showing up every single day, whether to drive us to school, drop off the important paper that somehow got left on the kitchen table, give rides to attend our sports events, and just generally be there. I believe this community is not built only by us students, but also you, who have made everything possible for us. Getting past th through these past four years has been hard on everyone, and I definitely felt the strain. The community here at MSJ was always ready to offer support and help when I needed it. When I had a mental health crisis my junior year, I knew this community had my back, and they did. Mental health is an important part of everyone's life, and MSJ truly understood the importance of it and supported me every step of the way. When I was ready to come back, everyone was there to welcome me with open arms. If this community was not here, I likely would not have been standing here as salutatorian. I cannot express the appreciation I feel for all of my peers and teachers that helped me through such a difficult time. To my peers, I know there's a lot of potential sitting in front of me. I know we will be able to make it through hard times and adversity because we have already done it. No matter what we choose, we will be great at it, and we will do it as a community. Set your goals high and reach to aim them with the strength and courage I know is in all of you. And with that, I would like to end with another quote from Welcome to Night Vale. Time is weird. So is space. I hope ours match again someday. k Dog signing off. Thank you. Thank you, Torrance, and congratulations. Please join me in welcoming Mary Lou Tedesco Harvey, Mount St. Joseph, class of 1983, and the Most Reverend Christopher Korn for the awarding of the Golden Diplomas to members of the Mount St. Joseph class of 1972. Welcome to the class of 1972. It's great to have you back in St. Peter's Church as a class. Tonight we celebrate our graduates and we extend sincere congratulations and best wishes to these bright young adults as they move on to the next step in their lives. But we're also celebrating you, our golden grads. Isn't that title wonderful? Golden grads. We're so honored that you came to be part of this evening with the greater MSJ community. I've heard that your class was part of the wild hippie group I'm quoting, some members have told me that. Everyone was happy being together at all the school sports, events, dances, etc., and that there are some stories that cannot be shared here for obvious reasons. But I'm sure we'll be reminisced at this weekend's events. You all obviously care about MSJ and will and have since you graduated, especially since Kathy Reardon Bove is part of your class and will always remind you if you aren't thinking about MSJ. Kathy has devoted many years to the Mount and continues to do so as a school board member and chair of the development committee. She never really retired. I'm not sure you really get to retire from MSJ. Her only very slight fault was marrying a Rutland High graduate. <laughs> but we're pretty sure somewhere along the way Ernie became fully green, especially after all he's done and continues to do for MSJ. A sincere thank you to Ernie and Kathy. Uh, another... uh, I'd also like to thank Norm Ladebush, who I think has been on the Finance Committee, I don't know, since the day after he became a CPA, I think, Norm. Thank you as well.
As I look out and see the distinctive two groups receiving diplomas tonight, each sitting on opposite sides of the church, I can't help but think that the young people are looking at your side thinking, that will never be me. <laughs> and you're looking at them thinking, how could this much time have passed since we were sitting there? What, wasn't it just a few years ago? The best part of tonight is that all of us can look at you and see what wonderful lives you have led, the gifts you've shared with the world, your family, and community. Living life as our dear sisters of St. Joseph showed us by example. Success by how you've helped others along the way as Christ teaches us to do. And what better example could we have for our graduates? Thank you for being such great examples of what being a Mountie means. Praying that our young people can always remember the message. Christ is by your side as you go through life. This class was fortunate to have a relationship with Sister Shirley Davis, a former principal and math teacher for years. She helped out even the, uh, the beginning part of this year, so they know what wonderful gifts the sisters gave to all of us. Please keep the sisters in your thoughts and prayers. Wishing both groups a wonderful weekend ahead. From what I've heard, we might have to caution the class of 1972 not to have too much fun. I'm looking at Rob Hendrickin, Tom, Tom and Donna LaVictory, a few others that are pretty wild. But seriously, congratulations to all of you. At this time, I'll read the names of the Golden Graduates to come forward once again to receive your MSJ diplomas. Alice Sawyer Chaffee. Floyd Daniel. Robbie Hendrickin, Robert, I'm sorry, Robert Hendrickin. <laughs> Donald Bedard Sr. Kathleen Reardon Bove. Mary Lynn Shappy Bove. Judith Brodowski. Gregory Carpenter. Lee Carrara. Brian Carroll. Alice Sawyer Chaffee, Doreen Chaffee, Claire Clarino, Mark Cursell, Michael Daly. Alan Donahue, Stephen Dow, Betty Tromley Flood, Dick Fuller, Kathleen Ryan Gentry, Brian Giro. Andrew Guyat, Brian Hackett, Mary Jane Ritter Hahn, Sarah Lawrence Hall, Marianne Plitzka Hayward, Carol Overton Hilliker. Kathleen Adams Johnson, Timothy Keith, John Kelly, 
Norman Ladebush. Donna de Blasio Le Victory. Thomas Le Victory. Marianne McDonough Lane. I'm sorry, Marion. Sherry Alberico Leach. Susan Dolly LeBlanc. Sally Valancourt Leonard. Roberta Stratton Machia. Mark Miglas. Philip Miller. Milton Moore. Marianne Pelusi. Stephen Riley. Patricia Sanborn. William Santwire. Christopher Taylor. Susan West Tiffany. Diane Trapini. Ronald Varga. Ann Baloma Wilson. Melinda Wilk. Timothy Wing. Patricia Jeanette Woods. I'd also like to mention John Kelly, who works tirelessly on our beautiful fields and does, has had for years. Thank you, John. Thank you for the shout out across the aisle. That was great. And congratulations, class of 1972. If you would please join me in welcoming Elizabeth Tracy, who will be here to deliver this year's valedictory address. Ellen. Your Excellency Bishop Coyne, Reverend Fathers, Principal Alexander, members of the Mount St. Joseph Academy School Board, family, friends, and fellow graduates. It's funny, these past few months, because they have gone by so fast, I often found myself thinking, how did I get here? And, well, in reflection, it's clear to see that it's because I spent every day with all of you. That probably sounds a little bit corny, but I remember coming into MSJ and I was so unbelievably quiet. I mean, I was scared of Mr. Audette, and some of you, if I'm being honest. I earned the nickname Sue Heck on the soccer team my freshman year, if any of you understand that reference. I do want to be clear, there's nothing wrong with being a quiet or reserved person. I just really did not feel the need to talk all the time. But part of it was that I did not feel my words held the value I know they do today. Last spring, we were practicing softball in the gym, and I made a joke about being shy, and Miss Salt, our coach at the time, said, what do you mean? I've never thought you were shy. And that stuck with me. I realized that I had been choosing to speak more often than I used to, and that's because I had been surrounded by people like all of you, who showed me that when I wanted to share my ideas, you wanted to hear them. If there is one thing that I hope you take away from the past four years, I hope you feel that your ideas are valuable, and that you have the power to make worthwhile contributions in whichever areas of life you choose, to use and share the knowledge that you will continue to gain. People will want you to share your ideas. I know I do. And knowing you all, you are beyond capable of doing so. The class of 2022 is a class who makes birthday cards for each other in English class, or bakes and brings in cakes. We're a class who teaches each other card games and maybe enjoys Pictionary too much. 
We're a class that yells Mark and makes memes about each other. Hey, sometimes we're a class that wins championships and we show up for each other. We're a class that pushes each other and roots for each other. However, I won't pretend that I am not blessed also with the love of my family. My mother, who taught me the importance of knowledge. Tori, who paved the way for me. Jacob, who inspired me to overcome my procrastination. Brooke and Haley, who never once let me doubt myself. My pop-up, Yaya, Grandma, Dad, Thomas, and so many more who showed me constant support. I really have many families to thank. The Bishops, Quintanas, and Williams for endlessly welcoming me day after day, year after year. But now that we're close to the end, I will always be grateful for MSJ's Class of 2022 for being another family. I feel like I'm in no position to be giving all of you advice. We're all in the same boat moving forward. But I truly hope that you take the example of who you all were to me and be that person for others. The most rewarding work you can do is on the relationships in your life. And that includes your relationships with yourself. Learning is paramount to this work. Wherever life takes you next, remember that knowledge is powerful. If you continue down an academic path, keep your focus on not only receiving high scores, but learning as well. When your work itself becomes the reward, that's how you know your time was well spent. Wherever life may take you, show everyone around you how much value they have. Find people that you love and spend your time with them. You all have so much to offer this world, and I can't wait to see the impacts it will make. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie, and congratulations. Once again, please join me in welcoming Bishop Coyne to share his thoughts on your graduation. Bishop Coyne. I'm told that last night at the baccalaureate mass, Father Marchand began his homily by referring to a number of uh, old sawhorse in terms of uh, words that are spoken at graduations, little mottos. And one of them is, go and make a difference, right? Go out and make a difference. What a charge to go out and make a difference. And so in my, my brief remarks, I'd offer two stories as to maybe how one can make a difference, and then a little bit of an exercise to help keep that habit of making a difference. And I offer these words to the graduates, some of whom share my Catholic faith and others who do not. But I think these words and these stories can go across the vast majority of faith and even human life, and I share it with others. And some of you may even be very familiar with these two stories. First is that a woman was walking along the beach after a very bad storm, and she came upon another woman who was at the, the edge of the water. And it seems that a, a number of starfish had washed up on the shore and were beginning to die in the sun. And so the woman who was at the water's edge was picking up as many of the starfish as she could and she was throwing them back into the water, trying to save them, throwing them back into the water. And so the first woman walked up and said, you know, that's very heroic, but why? You can't save them all. What difference does it make? What difference does it make? And the woman at the water's edge reached down and picked up one starfish, and she threw it in and she said, sure made a lot of difference to that one. Sure made a lot of difference to that one. In my life as a priest, in my life as a bishop, the person who's in front of me, the need that's in front of me, the act that's in front of me, is what, is what I'm required to do at that moment, to make a difference right there at that moment with that person, with that situation, to do it one at a time. So how do I make a difference? One person at a time, one kind act at a time, one heroic word at a time, one gesture at a time, one care, one expression, one gift of God's love at a time to our brothers and sisters. 
second story is one of Jesus' stories. It's a parable. A sower went out to, see, went out to sow, and as he threw his seed, some seed landed on rocky ground and sunny ground and was quickly burnt up and blown away by the wind. Some seed fell on shallow soil where it had some water and grew a bit, but then when the troubles came and the winds blew and the sun came, the seed withered. But some seed landed on fertile ground, on good ground, and it took root and it brought forth an abundant crop of 30 and 50 and 100 fold. How do you make a difference? You sow seeds. You sow seeds of goodness. Sow seeds of goodness. Sometimes it lands on barren soil. People are ungrateful. They don't even notice. Sometimes it lands on soil and maybe it takes a little bit of roots for a while and it's maybe changing that person's life or changing the situation, but at the end of the day, things just don't really work out. But sometimes the good acts that you do land on the soil of someone's heart, someone's life, and it brings forth a change, lands on a situation at work or a situation in your family, and it brings forth love where there might have been anger, inclusion where there may have been exception, community where there may have been exclusion. And sometimes it lands on really, really, really good soil, and you never know what change you can make in someone's life. But as someone who follows the Lord Jesus and as someone who follows God and is trying to make a difference, I plant seeds. One time, one person at a time maybe, I plant seeds. You know, we have many, many active works in our Catholic Church where we take care of so many people who are on the margins and sick, so many people who need food, so many people who need shelter. Around the world, we are by far the largest non-governmental agency to provide these things. And Catholic Relief Services gets into places and countries that nobody else can get into because we just go and take care of people. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. <laughs> no, seriously, thank you. Thank you. We just do that. That's what we do. And sometimes people say, well, you know, that person's taking advantage of you at the soup kitchen or that person's taking advantage of Catholic Charities. Yeah, that's the rocky soil or that's the not too deep soil. But then there's the others who really need it and that helps to bring forth. So how do you make a difference? Sow seeds, one person at a time. And here's the spiritual exercise I've offered you and it's part of our Catholic tradition. It's called <clears throat> the examination of conscience. People are encouraged each evening before they put their head on their pillow to look back at the day and examine their day. Did I, sow, did I do good things? Did I sow good seeds? Did I take care of that one person? Did I make a difference today? And if I didn't, okay, I'll do better tomorrow. I'll do better tomorrow. It's like when I was in the parish, I'll just share this one last story with you, kind of just brought me to it. When I was in the parish, there was a couple that was married 65 years, and she told me that before Mass, and at the end of Mass, I walked over to them and I said in front of everybody, everybody, Mr. and Mrs. Bonapani, they've been married 65 years, 65 years, isn't that wonderful? And then she stood up and I, put, I had the microphone and I put it in front of her before I knew the answer, don't ever do that, especially with kids in a church. And I said, Mrs. Bonapani, what's your secret to your long marriage? And she said, Every day, I think, he'll do better tomorrow. <laughs> so go home tonight, look in the mirror, and say to yourself, you'll do better tomorrow. Go out and make a difference. Congratulations, graduates. Thank you. Well, my friends, it seems to be that time. At this time, I'll invite Mr. Alexander and Bishop Coyne to present diplomas to the Mount St. Joseph graduating class of 2022 
the Academy's 135th graduating class. MSJ graduates, please join us when I call your name. Ethan James Corsell. <laughs> Heidi Elise Alf. Elena R. Bassett. <laughs> Devin Michael Bathalon. Taylor Blodorn. <laughs> Peter James Carlson. Brooke Isabella Bishop. Torrance Madison Monette. <laughs> Christian Carranza. Isabella Cormier. <laughs> Sienna Mackenzie Diesel. T. J. Uber. Elizabeth Jane Tracy. Shade Forrest. Tiana Mari 
Gallipo. Isabel Gross. <laughs> Sarah Christelle Guerrier. Sophia Grace Husak. <laughs> Samuel Robert Paquin. Christelle Potu. <laughs> Andre Prunty. Chase Andrew Wiegers. <laughs> Jacob Christopher Williams. Congratulations to you all. And my friends, you have your diplomas, which means that your graduation, oh, is not entirely complete. Because your transition from MSJ students, which you were only moments ago, to MSJ graduates and alum, which you are now, will be completed after I ask Ellie Tracy and Brooke Bishop to come up and address their class. Ellie and Brooke. Graduating class of 2022, please stand and face your families. You may now turn your tassels.
you. In fact, Peter, it is time to go. <laughs> but before we do that, please, if everyone would stand and join me in welcoming Reverend Maurice Moreau for the benediction. Call him up. O oh God, whose knowledge is without end, we turn to you and ask you to be with these, our graduates. They have been successful in their studies and in achieving their goal. May you be their guide this day and all their days to follow. Lord God, in your great mercy, Bless your people with every good gift from on high. Keep them in your sight and safe from all harm. Bestow your richest treasure upon them, the knowledge of you who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen.